Hello and welcome back. This is the second video in my series on dynamic systems theory. And in this video we're going to talk about attractors, which are one of the most important characteristics of trajectories in a dynamic system. So introducing this idea of attractors, the first thing that's important is to understand that we're talking not just about trajectories, but trajectories in a particular system. So a system, for the moment, we can think of the system as the context in which a particular trajectory occurs. So take this example of coins rolling around in this plastic funnel. Here the system would be the coins and the funnel and influence of gravity and so forth. In the context of this system, we would say that the center or bottom of the funnel that the coins roll down towards is an attractor. The reason for this is not the fact that any one coin goes there, but that coins started from many different places with different weights and of many different speeds all roll towards this central area. Even if the coin rolls in a very bizarre way. For example, if we were to roll it in at a sharper angle, like this, still the trajectory goes to the attractor. So it's the tendency of coins in this particular plastic funnel to roll towards this central point here. Regardless of where they start, regardless of the speed that they start at, regardless of their weight, and to some extent even their shape, that makes this central point, highlighted in red, an attractor. And furthermore, we could say that the entire region within which a coin will roll towards this central point is the basin of attraction. The region where trajectories will converge on the attractor. So here we see Conrad Waddington's famous epigenetic landscape diagram. And this provides us with another way to visualize the ideas of attractors and basins of attraction. So if the marble rolls down this landscape, it's going to end up in one of these four troughs. They're here, 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 or here. These are each attractors. And the basins of attraction for each of these attractors would be the areas within here that given a certain speed and momentum, weight, etc. of the marble would lead the marble to end in one of these attractors. So to just approximate this, if we're talking about this attractor here, the basin of attraction would be more or less within a certain range of, again, speeds and movements in the typical positions of the marble, we could say that like the basis of attraction for this attractor would be this area here. It's harder to describe up in this region here. Um, you know, the marble's movement would be indeterminate. But something, that's something we'll come back to um, because it's an important part of this particular diagram. We can also use the concept of an attractor in a more social scientific context. For example, if I live here, then this point would be an attractor in my behavior. So every day I might go out to different places. One day I may go into Manhattan. On another day I may go out to Queensboro Community College here. I may, after doing that, see friends in Jackson Heights. But on this particular day shown by the trajectory here and on other days, reliably, my trajectory will return to my apartment. It is an attractor for my behavior. Just as with the coin rolling down the funnel, a wide variety of starting points and speeds for coins will still lead them inevitably to the bottom of the funnel a wide variety of events, different circumstances, will still 
end with me returning to my apartment at the end of the day from a wide variety of starting places. Now, not not every time, just as you, you know, the, you could put the coin into the funnel in a way where it bounced out onto the floor. It's possible, too, for a person to, as a result of their circ circumstances, not return to a particular place, home or apartment or whatever. But with if there's a wide variety of circumstances within which the person will return home there, then we can say that this is an attractor state. Furthermore, to build on this, we can say that not only would a specific place that a person returns to, like an apartment here, be an attractor state, but we can say, in fact, that the person's, the pattern created by their trajectory every day could itself be an attractor state. So if I am living here, and then during most days, commuting out to Queensboro Community College, and then at the end of the day, returning home, then this pattern here, this line going out and then coming back, let's say it's a loop, this would itself be an attractor. The, the pattern itself of the trajectory is the attractor state. Now we can see that it's an attractor because not only did I do it on one occasion, but on other occasions, I tend to follow the same attractor. And now say maybe there's construction right here, so I have to go on a detour. But then after the, you know, I will return after the detour to the original trajectory. And then the next day, or whenever the construction is finished, I will return to the original trajectory. So in that sense, that pattern itself through space is an attractor. As a final and important example, we return to the case of the trajectory produced by motion tracking technology as a person walks in a treadmill. So as we can see here in the plotted uh, graph, the trajectory of left thigh angle and right thigh angle as the person walks in the treadmill forms this roughly repeating pattern. The sort of diagonal figure eight pattern, if we can call it that, would be, in this case, an example of an attractor.